Hi friends. If you want to check out the newest release from Pat McGrath, Mother, Divine Rose, Mothership 7, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia, if it's your first time here. And if you are returning, well, thank you for paying me a visit again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. How do we get our hands on Divine Rose? First of all, this photo popped up. Actually, it was sent to me by several of you in my DMs. And I went directly to selfridges.com since that was the retailer listed in that caption. Saw that it was out of stock went to a panic and I was like I lost my chance and I kept going to selfridges.com I kept going to Pat's Instagram I was just trying to look for clues because I did I mean I didn't even know this was like a shock drop as mama will call it everyone was asking me what do you know about this I'm like I don't know what's happening and I remember that day distinctly it was Thursday I had like two classes and two clients. I had to take Maddie to the vet. So I'm like zipping around Manhattan, carrying on a carry-on and my tote on the phone, trying to figure out where Divine Rose is. It was quite funny if you would have seen me in the street. But then I saw Trend Moods post and it said, exclusively available on the Selfridges app. I was like, oh my God. Website is very different from app, right? So this was an exclusive at the time because one of you had noted, although it will not be exclusive to self ridges only going forward eventually, it was exclusive to the app at that time during the day. I saw add to bag, it was still available. Click, I paid for the $55 for unlimited shipping from the UK, but for a year. It was either $30 for the one-time shipping fee or pay an extra 25 to get a year's worth of free shipping express from the UK. Divine Rose was ordered on Thursday. It was here on a Monday. You know what? It's worth it to me. I will be shopping from Selfridges more often with that said. So when I did that Instagram story about it exclusively being available on the Selfridges app, yeah, it was exclusively available at that time. You couldn't get it anywhere else except from that app until of course it sold out. In terms of what other retailers will be carrying Divine Rose, Glam, Dr. Mona Khan, hey Mona. She was really nice enough to screenshot a comment thread under one of Pat's post and Pat did confirm that Divine Rose will eventually be available on her site. As of when, I do not know. I do not know when it will be available at Sephora. Right now, it's still on Self Ridges as out of stock, but it does say exclusive to Self Ridges. Apparently, Pat hasn't given her UK squad lots of love, so this was a nice gesture, I guess, to Self Ridges and her UK fans for this palette to be only exclusively available on the app and in the UK to buy. So I understand. Any updates that I run into, I'll be sure to post them on the community board, but I'm sure you just want to see the app. You're like, enough with the story. I just wanted to let you know, okay? You know how I like to get chatty. This is also in collaboration with Morgan Turner. Morgan and I, well, first of all, two things. Morgan and I are huge Pat fans. So she texted me, she was like, hey, you just want to collaborate on this palette because we both love Mama Pat. We're both a huge fan of her Mothership palettes. And I just kind of like want to collab with you. I'm like, I am down. Number two, her and I are kindred spirits because she is a physical education teacher for middle school kids. I'm a group fitness instructor. So I understand just the, the workload on a daily basis when you are in a physical type of job, on your feet all day, every day, dealing with large groups of people. It could be very draining. So I totally understand where she's coming from. And I, I know I'm not teaching middle school children, but let me tell you, depending on the day, I'd rather teach the middle school children than some of these adults I'll be running into on a daily basis, you know what I mean? And if you haven't already checked her out, Morgan Turner does lovely reviews. She does demos, hauls, and all types of swatches, multi-look videos. If you're looking to get inspiration from one palette, not just with one look, but with several. And she is the sweetest. So definitely check her out if you haven't already. I will link all her information down below, her YouTube channel, as well as her Instagram account. And yeah, this is just an opportunity for you to see both of our swatches. You'll see how the shadows work on our different skin tones. It'll be really Really interesting to know what look Morgan comes up with I'm gonna do we'll see how it goes I don't want to make this video a thousand years long because I also want to edit this in time for it to be up at least by tonight 
the agenda is full, friends. So a huge thank you to Morgan. Thank you, Morgan, for reaching out to collab with me and just working with me. I really appreciate it. And obviously, she was lucky enough also to grab the Divine Rose palette from the Selfridges app. So after you see this, or you can see hers first and then mine, whatever works. Kelsey Brianna Bay got her video out, so you got all your favorites just lined up to see is a party. Divine Rose Mothership 7. Here is a fresh package look where I just got it in the mail yesterday. So when I got home, I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like fresh out of the box. If this isn't the most beautiful illustration, what you see here is what is in the palette. Like this is an authentic prelude, peak intro to what you will see color story wise. And let me tell you. I made sure I took the shot of this palette new and unscathed, but look at this color story. Now, yes, they are four repeat shades in the palette. You could be upset about it. I really don't care because I have signed the contract of Pat McGrath motherships and buying all of them. Despite the repeat shades, I really don't care. The repeat shades are Skin Show New, this exists in Mothership 1 Subliminal, Rose Dusk, Mothership 2 Sublime, Astral Solstice, Mothership 6 Midnight Sun, and Iridescent Pink 003, which exists in her highlighter trio. This is Iridescent Pink 003, so we could compare these two formula-wise, but I do think, based on Christine's observation, Temtalia.com, that the ingredient lists are slightly different, so it is a possibility that the ingredient existing in Divine Rose is different from that from her highlighter trio. In this video, we'll have our swatches, we'll have our comparison swatches, so let's roll into those swatches now, and I'll see you in a bit. First Shade Skin Show Nude exists in Mothership 1, Subliminal. Valoria, new shade from Divine Rose, is a powder matte. Sable Bronze, new shade in Divine Rose, a metallic shadow. Refined Gold 002, new shade in Divine Rose, is of course a special triple digit texture. Iridescent Pink 003, repeat shade from her highlighter trio. Has a beautiful duochrome effect, as you know, if you do own that highlighter trio. Extreme Mahogany, new shade for Divine Rose, is a red tone brown matte. Up next is Lovelace, new shade from Divine Rose, a metallic gray lavender. Rose Dusk is a repeat shade from Mothership 2 Sublime. Oh, VR Rose Venus is simply gorgeous. Look at that duochrome. New shade for Divine Rose in that VR special textured formula. It looks yellow on camera, but it's actually like a gold peach. And lastly, we have Astral Solstice, which exists in Midnight Sun and is a dazzling glitter topper shade. And here are all the shades from Divine Rose. We're looking at four repeats and the rest are new. Nice balance between metallic, matte, and special shade inclusion. And let's take a look at some of the comparisons, both with the shades that exist in other palettes and just shades that I thought of when looking at Divine Rose. Into some comparisons, here is the original Rose Dusk shade from Mothership 2 Sublime, and now the Rose Dusk from the current Divine Rose. I was trying to figure out if they look the same or not, but it appears that they do. I'm trying to sharpen the focus here. I feel the one from Divine Rose almost has like a blue flip to it. It's so hard to tell. They very much could be the same. And I think from this shot, they look the same depending on how the light hits. Here's Disobedient from Bronze Seduction. Entrapment also from Bronze Seduction. Going into Extreme Mahogany from Divine Rose Mothership 7. Next to both Entrapment and Disobedient. And Mahogany appears to have a more of a red-brown base. I believe this is Corruption from Bronze Temptation Holiday 2018. And that has more of a purple-brown hue to it. Here is Skin Show Nude from Subliminal Mothership 1. This is the repeat shade from Divine Rose. And now Skin Show Nude from Divine Rose. Swatch next to the one from Sublime, or Subliminal, excuse me. It seems the one from Divine Rose has a little more punch, probably because it's newer, whereas the one from Subliminal is older. Skin Show Glow from Mothership 2 Sublime has more of a pinkier hue. Interesting she didn't include this, but I like that she included Skin Show Nude because it's a 
versatile beige shade. Paranormal from La Vie and Rose. One of my most favorite mattes ever from Pat. Swatch next to Valoria from Divine Rose. And is much cooler in tone, takes on a lavender hue. Pale Fire from La Vie and Rose. Now VR Rose Venus from Divine Rose. Next to Pale Fire. Ugh. They're different textures altogether. VR Rose Venus has that beautiful duochrome effect, but it's a special shade where it's like a gel texture, as you know, whereas Pale Fire is a truer metallic finish. Still has a duochrome, but the duochrome effect is much more prominent in VR Rose Venus. And here's a close up of what VR Rose Venus can do. It looks yellow on camera, but it is like a green type of yellow with that peach reflect, it is outstandingly beautiful. Oh, I can't stand it. And now we go in with Euphoria from La Vie and Rose. Swatch next to Lovelace, new shade from Divine Rose. And you see Lovelace has a cooler tone hue when swatched next to Euphoria. And here are all the comparison swatches. Some are repeats just for you to see as an example, and then other shades that I thought of when swatching Divine Rose that I feel look similar or would just pair beautifully with the palette. Other comparisons I thought of was Bronze Eclipse from Midnight Sun next to Sable Bronze from Divine Rose. So Bronze Eclipse is a little more golden in tone. Let me uh, pull you in a little closer. So Bronze Eclipse, a little more gold and Sable Bronze takes on more of a cooler toned bronzy hue. And why not, let's take a look at Iconic from Sublime. Iconic is a little lighter in texture. It could be just because Sublime is an older palette. I've had it for quite some time. But Sable Bronze has a lot more punch than Iconic, just texture alone and color. Love Lace from Divine Rose. I thought about two shades that exist in the Platinum Bronze Mini Mothership Sublime. Or I should say subliminal, excuse me. We got Ritualistic, which is more of a smokier tone, and Smoke and Mirrors. Sorry, that was Smoke and Mirrors. Here's Ritualistic. Smoke and Mirrors takes on more of like a brown tone, Ritualistic is similar to Lovelace. They both have that smoky lavender hue about them. The shades in Platinum Bronze are a little more taupey, whereas I feel Lovelace from Divine Rose is more of like an actual lavender metallic shade. These definitely have a little more smoke to them. Refined Gold 002. I did not swatch this next to some of the other gold shades, let's say from Nocturnal Nirvana from her most latest holiday release. It's a little more yellow gold. Refined Gold, although they look similar in shade, I believe Refined Gold 002 from Divine Rose has pink reflex in the formula, which is tough to see on camera. And I can understand frustrating if you're trying to decipher these differences and variations on camera, but Refined Gold is a different color from Incandescent. And Antique Gold 002 from Ritualistic Rose, I'm gonna put it here next to Refined. It's a little lighter in texture, it's a little more subdued. It takes on that actual antique look to gold. Like, it's not as shiny, and I think she did that on purpose because if you look at something antique, it's almost burnished. And I think that shade takes on that characteristic very well. But I don't know if you can tell, between these two golds, Revine Gold 002 looks a little pinky in that flip because of the reflex in there. And Beyond Bronze 003, so much warmer than the bronzes that exist. Like Sable Bronze, this is Sable Bronze for instance. See how much more browner that looks? Sable Bronze is a lot more cool tone, a lot more like antique bronze if you will. And lastly, Astral Rose Orchid, the dual chrome special effect shade in Ritualistic Rose, I'll put it here. Compared to VR Rose Venus in Divine Rose, I believe VR has a smoother consistency and this serves more as a topper shade for sure. Whereas this is actual, like an actual color I feel you could apply as your standout lid color. And look at that beautiful duochrome effect. It is absolutely gorgeous. It also kind of reminds me of VR Nectar from Sublime Mothership 2 which is this shade here. It has like a beautiful pink reflect. So let me see, I'm gonna put it, nestle it right between these. That has more of like a neon pink, whereas the VR Rose Venus has like a peachy, like green gold shift. It is gorgeous. Oh, the clouds are rolling in. 
Got to bump up the exposure. You can't see anything. Do you love my earrings? These are from Eastly I Still Love You NYC, the new Art Deco collection. It's like I've always wanted these earrings, but I never knew that I needed them until I saw them. So I thought they were like an appropriate accessory to wear for this review and demo, don't you think? Now that we have all swatches and comparison swatches out the way, let's get into this demo. And with that said, We are going to use as many shades as possible and as you know I love to do multi-look videos. I can always dedicate a separate video to creating more looks so you could just see more shadows in action. And before we begin, let's quickly take a look at Iridescent Pink from the Highlighter Trio. So that's what that looks like. And here's Iridescent Pink from the palette. I think the one from the palette has a little more reflectivity, don't you think? Or maybe they look the same and I'm just playing tricks on myself. I prep my lids with a combination of the ABH Eye Primer and the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Concealer and Natural Beige because the ABH on its own is very light so I combine it with the Too Faced just so it could create more realistic for my skin tone gradient of color. I feel it's a little too far. <gasps> That's better. I have to go in with L'Oreal because it is like the best. These swatch pretty creamy but you still get a little kick up in the pan. Not too worried about it though. So, but just wanted to let you know. Just making sure I blend out whatever crease because I don't set my primers, you know what I mean? Wayne Goss number three from his anniversary two set. I'm gonna take that in the crease. This is a smoky lavender shade that I feel is just, is very unique in tone and can be built up for sure. This is the third time I'm going in because I want to build up this color. If you are a deeper skin tone, this probably will show up a little ashy on you or maybe not because I feel with Pat's mattes, they usually apply deeper than how they appear in pan. And because of that, I feel this will not show up as ashy as we would think on a deeper skin tone. If you have La Vie and Rose, you could use this to smoke out paranormal. <gasps> oh my God. This on its own lid, lower lash line, you're done. I mean, it's such a pretty shade. Very cool toned and smoky. Extreme mahogany with my Wayne Goss number four. Pat's Browns pack a lot of punch, so. Pat that down on the outer V. I'm really happy she did not include another black. I'm happy she went with the brown. I think it will add enough depth for sure to the look. Just smoking it out here on the outer V. And I like to pat down first to get the color on and then I'll use circular motions to diffuse the edges. And I like to pull out my shadow a little bit. It's crazy, so keep in mind, I'm gonna apply Extreme Mahogany on its own on this eye so you can see the color better. But when you combine it with Valoria, it's gonna take on like a smokier tinge. It's not gonna look as red-brown in the swatch by itself, I feel, when you combine it with Valoria. So it's gonna appear still cool tone overall. Valoria with my wing gloss number four on the lower lash line. I'm gonna take it down because I like smoky lower lash lines. If that's not your thing, then use a smaller brush to apply that color. So Niji Pencil Pro with Extreme Mahogany on the outer third. Connecting that to the top. Going back with my wing number three just to diffuse the edges further. Oh. That's nice. Oh, we lost the lash. Make a wish. Question is, what are we gonna put on the lid? Love Lace and Sable Bronze are like that smooth, almost wet feeling metallic formula that glides with ease, whether with finger or with brush, we could do that. Or VR Rose Venus or Rose Dust. I think I'm gonna do Love Lace. We gotta do Love Lace. No other than with my Sona G Build 3. Applying this dry on the lid. I'm doing a pat Pull application to get the majority of the color on the lid and using the edge of the brush to just lightly carve under the crease line. So we're not creating a cut crease, it's more like a, a soft cut crease if you will. Look at that color. Oh, it is divine. I'm taking some of my finger just so you can see that application and anytime you apply one of matte melted metallic shades with your finger, you will get more color payoff but it could be a little heavy on the lid because it has a lot of body to it, but it's still very smooth, so you don't have to apply a ton on your finger to get that effect. It's just, 
Refined Gold 002. Same brush. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. Rose Dusk, now in the inner lower third. Pop it right there. Rose Dusk is a classic shade. I know people might be disappointed in it being in this palette, but not everyone has a pat palette. And I'm sure people didn't buy Sublime because of Blitz Emerald, that crazy green shade. If you take away those four shades from Sublime, you will get like a mini pseudo Divine Rose from Copper Tone, Skin Show Glow, this shade, and Dark, I believe. There's probably another one in there, but I forgot. Definitely taking Iridescent Pink 003. I could have used a smaller brush, but this will be our inner corner highlight. Iridescent Pink is that shade that you could apply on any color and it's gonna create that veil like pink cast but still be very light in texture it almost appears neon it's so beautiful all right friends that's one eye let's do the other like i said we'll go in with extreme mahogany by itself to see how it does doing that with a refer number 16 i lied at number 15 smooth out these lids first if you feel pat's mats are a little challenging to blend i would highly recommend that you powder down your lid first because they do have a lot of pigment and if your base is too wet, those pigments are gonna latch on and it could appear slightly splotchy. So just know that. I'm gonna start here on the outer V and I'm using very light pressure. That's why it's really important to use a soft brush, but we'll still pick a product because you don't have to force the brush onto the skin. You just use very light circular motions and the bristles will glide on the skin and will then deposit the color without it looking splotchy or uneven. So you see more of like the reddish brown hue here on its own than when you apply it with Veloria. And I'm building this up more so on the outer corner and actual crease area. I wipe my number three clean from Wayne and I'm blurring out the edges of that application. Taking my reference number one, Extreme Mahogany, patting down a little more color on the outer V. So we can create that contrast and also build a little more intensity there. I'm also placing some on the inner V as well. And I'm just taking the bristles and smoothing out that application. Not bad at all, friends. We must apply VR Rose Venus. That's it. Same Sona G, build a three. In between extreme mahogany. Mm. This is such a cool shade, friends. It does not do any justice on camera. The flip is almost like a yellow green in like that peachy rose base. So pretty, magnificent. And I feel it's actually a easier special shade to work with because usually Pat special shades, sometimes they have a lot of texture to them and people don't like using them because they feel it's too much glitter types of particles on the face think this VR shade is just right and a lot more user friendly than most. Sable Bronze on the lower lash line. Pull it right across here. Sable Bronze texture is incredibly smooth. You could apply this all over the eye and call it a day as well. You could do that with Love Lace. You could do that with Rose Dusk. There's so many like single shadow textures in this palette that you could just do single eye looks with that I feel makes it extremely beginner friendly for a mothership palette. Just slowly, just gently blending that out a little more. Taking a little bit of extreme mahogany on the outer third of the lower lash line. Look at this duochrome. Are you kidding me? Skin Show Nude. So Najith Pencil Pro on the inner corner. Here it is in pink 003. On the lower third, just here, not exactly on the inner corner like we placed on that eye, but more as like a lower lash line pop. You know how Astral Solstice works. Astral Solstice exists in Midnight Sun, and I also use that shade in my Midnight Sun video. But how I would use it is just press and lift. This is all you need to create a dazzle disco ball Pat McGrath effect. And I'm gonna place it, where can I place it? I'm gonna place it right on Lovelace right on the center of the lid. And this is all you need. You don't need more than that. And look how that just made Lovelace pop off. Three-dimensional, beautifully dazzling. It's like stardust. And yes, it's a repeat shade, but I'm happy it's in here because I think it's a perfect tone that is rather harmonious with these other rose pink tones in the palette. All right, friends, let's put on some lashes and I'll be right back. And here's a close-up shot of the look on the lashes. I have Ardell's Naked Lashes in 421. Look at that. 
I can't do that well with the left eye. Ah. The color combinations are gorgeously beautiful. This is definitely one of her more monochromatic curation of shades and palettes, absolutely. Wide shot of the look, and on the lips, I have Patrick Ta's Lip Liner and Liquid Cream Silky Lipstick Something Something. I'll put all the shade names down below. And then Mel Thompson and Christian Aldette's Lipstick in Beauty on the Pout. Let's talk about it, friends. Divine Rose, huh? In short, I love this palette. It's definitely, like I said, one of her more monochromatic palette. The color story and the shades that contribute to it, I feel just lends itself to like that rosy, smoky, taupey type of moment. And although there are four repeat shades in here, again, I know we are humans and we love to express our observations. I am a fan of Pat McGrath. I'm gonna buy it anyway. If you feel really strongly about paying 120, which is what it will cost if you get it from Selfridges, 120 for a palette that has four repeat shades in it, then I understand. There's not a lot of information on the palette in terms of her inspiration. There is a blurb on the Selfridges product detail caption that mentioned that this was an ode to Vogue because Vogue considers Pat to be one of the most innovative makeup artists of our time. So I think she created this palette for them. And if that's the reason why she included four repeat shades or when she thinks of Vogue, she thinks of roses. I don't have a lot of information in terms of her mood board, so to speak, in terms of what her inspo was in creating this palette. In terms of what the consumer can expect, this is her most user-friendly palette to date. I would put this under Midnight Sun. I think Midnight Sun is actually... Well, the only reason I say Midnight Sun is because Sublime, which before Midnight Sun came onto the scene, I felt this was her most user-friendly palette. Because you take out the green, everything is daily friendly. Even these special shades, yeah? Because even though these are very neon pink and this shade has like a pink tinge to it, even without the green, you can make it work or just not use them at all or put them on Rose Dusk or Copper Tone. And with Midnight Sun, if you take out Blitz Violet Orchid, this is pretty daily friendly too. Even with Blood Moon 005, that definitely has more texture to it, but you don't have to put it on as a lid shade. You could also put it on as like your inner corner pop or inner lower lash line pop. So I feel this is definitely the most daily friendly after Divine Rose. The reason why I would consider Divine Rose more daily friendly than Midnight Sun is because Midnight Sun still has a little more smoke to it because Wicked Envy is that beautiful olive tone. Uh, Bronze Eclipse, I think, is more like bronzy. Here are both palettes together. You can see Divine Rose is a lot softer in hue than Midnight Sun. And I don't know if it's because ever since I tried Urban Decay's Naked 3, is three the one that was supposed to be rosy in tone and when I tried those shades they all looked ashy and gray on me and since then I have yearned for like a rose toned palette that will give me those rose tones on my skin. I got that with my Viseart Rose Edit palette, which I think would pair beautifully with Divine Rose. Are you kidding me? Or if you have Levian Rose, I think Levian Rose leans more towards the purple side of things because of Purple Rain. But Paranormal and Pale Venus Euphoria with Divine Rose. Please. And of course, the most obvious pairing from her most recent release, Ritualistic Rose. If you already have this and you get Divine Rose, it is going to be a par -ty. I definitely feel these textures have a little more texture than the ones found in the palette. If you feel you needed something a little more smoother to apply these on and you get Divine Rose, you will not be disappointed. Can you imagine this with Valoria or even this with, hold on, I'm gonna do that right now actually. I'm gonna just apply that on top of VR Rose Venus. Mm. Mm. Yep, that works just fine. Cause basically this is like the glitter version of VR Rose Venus. So if you want something more low key, more glow, you use VR Rose Venus by itself, but if you want it to pop off, you will go in with Astral Rose Orchid because it has this beautiful duochrome feel. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna be doing rose all day, every day. And although I'm a huge fan of Pat and I feel like a lot of people buy Pat's products, feel there are a lot of people there that don't buy her motherships just because they're still intimidated by them. As of late, I feel people purchased Midnight Sun because that was the only one thus far 
out of the six that they felt comfortable using more often than like once in a while. This I feel is going to go. If this releases at Sephora during the holiday bonus sale, this is going to go so fast because these are not as intimidating. Even with Iridescent Pink 003, it doesn't have any texture. It's very smooth. It's more like a traditional powder than her like astral shades or what have you. The only textured shadow here I feel is Astral Solstice, which again, you just pat once, unlike I did here, just swirled so you can see the full impact of color and shine. But look at that is absolutely gorgeous. VR Rose Venus, incredibly smooth. Despite the duochrome reflectivity, this is so easy to apply with a brush or even with finger. It's so beautifully easy to get on the lid. Like, you can't go wrong. Refined Gold 002, beautifully smooth as well, easy to apply. These shades here, crazy. I don't know if she bumped up the metallic formula, but sable bronze, like so smooth. Look at that. Lovelace, Morgan and I were saying that Lovelace might be our favorite shade because the glide on these shadows is extraordinary. And even with the matte, Valoria just feels like butter. Look at that. Really impressed by the performance of this palette. Really love that even the special shade textures are a little more low key. And for hardcore pat fans, if you feel that's like a no for you, that you wanna see that texture from her special shades, don't get me wrong, these are still very special in texture. VR Rose Nectar is a duochrome. Astral Solstice is that dazzle effect color. And Iridescent Pink, if you don't have her trio, you could experience it in this palette. Like all things you see on my channel, anything I talk about, you are not forced to buy. If you are a hardcore Pat fan, then I think you would love Divine Rose. I think it's just a beautiful curation of shades. Oh. Wait, we gotta do the flashlight dance. Look at Astral Solstice here on the lid. VR Rose Venus is a little more low key, but look at that glow. I'm trying to get both at the same time, but look at this. I love these shades and I love the dazzle. This is what Astral Solstice does, friends. It's like stardust. Realistically, if you don't like these tones, if you don't like lavender and rose, light bronzes, uh, peaches, then you're definitely not gonna like Divine Rose. This is the majority of the palette, friends. This is what you're gonna get top to bottom, from special shade to matte to metallic. That is the color story. It is very prominent in this palette. If you want more variety, then yes, you can definitely get more variety from her other Mothership palettes, so skip it. I insist on buying each and every one of Pat's palettes because again, I collect them. And no matter what palette she comes out with, I'm grabbing it. Do I have my favorites? Absolutely. And in regards to Divine Rose, I think this is this is probably one of her best in terms of just the thought she put into it. And I understand if you disagree with me in terms of her including repeat shades. Like, how is it so thoughtful, Alicia? She got repeat shades in there. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Rose Dusk is a phenomenal color. You want me to show it to you again? Rose Dusk is just phenomenal, phenomenal. It could go well with a brown matte, a lavender matte, a pinky matte, a peachy matte. It is very versatile. So why not include it in Divine Rose? If she really loves that shade, I would include it in the palette again. Skin Show Glow is a beautiful champagne -y beige highlight shade that I think everyone could benefit from, whether it be a lid shade or in a corner highlight or brow bone highlight. You could even use it on the cheekbones to really make it pop. Iridescent Pink 003, I actually have it on my cheekbones here. I applied it as highlight. Gorgeous shade to apply to layer on the other shades in here so it could have that neon pink effect. And Astral Solstice is one of my most favorite topper shades from her entire collection. Sure, she could have had pink reflex in there, but I like the fact that it's just like that universal glittering type of tone that goes well with a lot of colors because I think it just widens the versatility in use. You could apply it on a bronze, you could apply it on a lavender, you could apply it on the duochrome peachy shade like VR Rose Venus. So you have a lot more options in terms of what you could use Astral Solstice with. I love it. 
I love it. And again, this video is for you to decide if it's worth you buying, if it's going to fit into your lifestyle. Are you going to use this often? Are you going to use these shades every day? Can this be easily integrated into your makeup collection? I know it's going to be with mine. I'm going to combine it with, with La Vie and Rose. I'm going to play with it with the Rosé Edit Palette. I'm even going to play with it with some of the mattes in my Viseart Grand Pro. Like, are you kidding me? Valoria with this shade, like this matte here. Let me see here. Look, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I love those tones. And with all the other eyeshadow that I have in my collection, I just think it fits so well with these colors and the eye looks that are about to pop off, friends. You don't even know. I'm going to do a dedicated video with just doing more looks with this palette uh, because my brain, I just want to combine Valoria and Paranormal. I want to combine it with the Rosé Edit palette, like I said. So definitely stay tuned for that if you haven't subscribed already. Well, if you don't, then you wouldn't know. Let me know if you're going to grab Divine Rose when it becomes available again. Like I said, I will post all those updates on the community board as I receive them, as they are released. If you already have Divine Rose, let me know what you think about it, how you've been using it, what your favorite shades are. Again, a huge thank you to Morgan Turner for collaborating with me. If you haven't checked out her divine rose video already i will put that video link down below and i'll also display her subscribe button so you could check out her channel as well and until then friends that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing and until then i'll see you on here again with another review tutorial get ready with me or famous list take care and i'll see you again soon Ooh.